service to God like you. What should we sing tonight? 722. 722. 722. I promise I'll be done preaching before 722. How's that for a deal? Wow. I, I make that announcement once in a while. When Marlene and Judy leave right after communion, it's not because they got mad at me or anybody. She's got to go get supper or the living room.
Let's confess our sins to God, our maker and our rescue. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a troubled and sorrowful sinner, confess to you all my sins. I have offended you. I justly deserve your punishment now and forever. But I am sorry for my sins and turn away from them. I pray for your boundless mercy for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ. Be gracious to me. Please forgive me. Give to me your Holy Spirit to change my sinful life and bring me to the life of the Amen. Our Almighty God in His great mercy has given His own Son even to die for us. For Jesus' sake, he forgives us all our sins through his Holy Spirit. He cleanses us and gives us the power to proclaim the mighty deeds of God, who called us out of darkness into the splendor of his light. As a called, ordained minister then of Jesus' church, by his authority I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So God's word written on the back of our bulletin, and Canon is reading to us from Genesis. same night, Jacob arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and everything else that he had. And Jacob was left alone. Uh, and a man wrestled with him until the day, breaking of day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. And Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men, and you have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Kenneth. And Carl's going to read us, and we're continuing to read through uh, Paul's last letter to his uh, young friend, Pastor Timothy. I will not come up front, Pastor. Okay. Uh, Verse 2, Timothy 3, 14, verse 4 and 5. As for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. That the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is judge, the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but will have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be so reminded, endure sufferings, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Carl. Let's stand as able, rejoicing in good news from Jesus. Speaking to us here from Luke's Gospel, chapter 18. Jesus told his disciples a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to this judge and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. 
For a while, the judge refused. But afterward, he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, and will not God give justice to his elect? Who cry to him day and night. Will he delay long over them? I tell you, God will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Let's speak our faith to the one who is coming again to uh, complete our rescue. On our worship page, we have the Apostles' Creed. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My friends in Christ, Do you sometimes have that experience that life is a struggle? I'm wondering, what do you wrestle with in your life? Or maybe I should ask it this way, against whom do you sometimes struggle? Sometimes it's my kids, or me with my budget, or my diet, you know? With whom do you wrestle? So we've got this great story here in uh, Genesis 25 through 36 about these two brothers who in fact are twins, but they are by no means identical, very different. They have their very first fight, guess what, about which one will be the firstborn. Because <laughs> being firstborn in their day, 3,000 plus years ago, was a big deal. The firstborn gets two-thirds of the inheritance. The firstborn for these two, even a bigger deal, their grandpa is Abraham, the one through whom the promise comes. Your people will be blessed. From your people will come the Messiah. So who will be the firstborn receiving the promised land? So their mother, Rebecca, feels them fighting in her womb even before they're born. And the Lord tells her, you have two nations in your womb. These two rival people who will go their separate ways already from birth. The one nation will be stronger than the other. The older will serve the younger. Okay, so first, here's your first quiz question. Two brothers born. Anybody over here know the name of the firstborn? Ooh, way to go. Mom guessed it. Well, you got one of the names, but not the right one. What's the name of the firstborn? Anybody over here know? Harry. His name was Harry. See, those people are much smarter. Why? They're looking at the screen. <laughs> the first guy, he's born and he's covered with hair. You know some of the kids have a crown of hair that they lose? This guy was, you know, hairy on his arms and his legs, so they called him Harry, or in their language, Esau. And the second born was, Mom? Jacob. Jacob, there you go, see? Uh, which, to translate that back into English, so it's kind of a funny story. Who's going to be first born? Here comes Harry, Esau, but guess who's trying to trip him up? Hanging on to his heel comes his brother, trying to get past them to be first, right? So they called this kid... Jacob, in their language, it means heel. If you name your kid Jacob, that's perfectly respectable, right? Would you name your kid heel? 
<laughs> Not a very nice name, is it? I mean, heel is kind of a down low. This is, this is somebody, um, you know, he's going to pull your leg. He's going to trip you up. He's a, he's a conniver, a trickster. Another way to translate Jacob is flat out cheater. So why does God say that the second born, this guy named Mr. Heel, why would he get God's blessing? So I've got to tell you a little bit more about this, this great story. So the worst of it <clears throat> comes when their father Isaac feels like he's on his deathbed. And he says to his son Esau, I want you to go hunt again my favorite game and cook up that delicious stew. And then I will finally, before I die, I will give you the blessing that goes to the firstborn. So Esau straps on his bow and arrow and he goes out to hunt. And Jacob straps goat skins on his arms and his legs so he feels real hairy. He covers himself with his brother's robe. <sighs> Smells just like Esau. His mom cooks up this famous wild stew, and he goes into his blind father's tent. Esau, is that you? And Isaac feels his son, and he smells him, and he tastes the stew, and he says, Esau, here is the blessing. You will get the promised land. From you will come the Messiah. Again, the guy's lived up to his name, Jacob. He's tripped up his brother. He's a cheat. So guess what he has to do? He's got to run for his life. His big brother's coming back, the strong huntsman. So Jacob runs away to a place called Haran. It's where Abraham had stayed on his journey. We would call it the very north of Syria, just short of Turkey up there, a war zone nowadays. And Jacob settles down there, and he wants to marry a beautiful woman named Rachel, but this time Jacob gets tricked, and instead he marries first the older sister, Leah. But he continues to work for his father-in-law, and then he gets also Rachel, and now these two sisters are in a competition. Who's going to have the most kids with Jacob? And it gets so intense that these women also throw their handmaiden, their servant girls, their slaves to Jacob. All of a sudden, Jacob has kids by four women. Tricky, huh? His father-in-law is jealous of his growing strength. And Jacob then, in another story, tricks his father-in-law of his wealth. And guess what? Now Jacob has to run again. Where is he going to go? The Lord tells him, go home. So this is where our story that Kenan read for us starts. <clears throat> Jacob is coming back after 20 years to see his brother Esau, and he sends messengers ahead. Your little brother has become very wealthy. Will you welcome him home? And the messengers come back and they say, Esau is coming to welcome you with 400 men. <laughs> now how does Jacob feel? He's come to get revenge. But he's still tricky. Jacob takes his huge caravan and he makes two camps. Why? Well, one gets attacked, maybe the other gets away. And then just as our text is starting here, it's the middle of the night, Jacob jumps up out of his sleep. Why can't he sleep? <laughs> I've wronged my brother. How am I going to face him? What's God going to do with me? Jacob jumps out of his sleep, and it tells us in our text that <clears throat> he takes his children and his wives, and he crosses this little Jabbok stream, clambers down the shore, and puts them finally on the other side in Esau's territory, and he tells them, you sleep here. And he goes back to the far shore. What is this guy thinking? He puts his family out front? So either one of two things. Some say, 
Maybe Jacob is thinking, okay, God, I can't protect my family. You have to do it. You said the promise would come through me. It's up to you. Or if you want to look at it a little more negatively, maybe Jacob is thinking, well, at least I will hear screams in the night if Esau is really that mad. Maybe I can get away. Verse 22 now. Jacob, trying to sleep, verse 24 I should say, suddenly feels these two strong arms slip around him and lift him from the earth and throw him down. He's crashing. This attacker jumps on Jacob. A hot breath in his face. They're fighting back and forth. Jacob fighting for his life. Back and forth they're wrestling. Who has attacked him? Their faces collide, but in that deep, dark, dead night, Jacob can't even see who this is. Who fights and fights against Jacob with such rage? Every ounce of Jacob's strength is now met with equal opposite strength. Every hold that Jacob works up is countered as quickly. This guy fights with him like he is his twin. Sweaty combat. <laughs> Jacob now fights this battle even more brutal within himself. Feeling under attack, his conscience is getting to him. His attacker doesn't say anything, but Jacob can't control himself. His sweat mixing with tears, from deep within him, this cry comes out. Forgive me. The prophet Hosea talks about Jacob's tears. Wrestling on, no break in this bout, choking on the dirt, I am not the firstborn. I cheated for that blessing. Forgive me. Forgive me. But the attacker's grip on Jacob just gets tighter. <laughs> all of his muscles, all of his cunning, Jacob cannot overpower this attacker. But the weird thing is, this doppelganger, is neither beating Jacob. Who is this ferocious assailant? For all of his tears, the attacker never lets up. Never hears Jacob's desperate plea. Two fighting in the dark wrestling on and on. The one knows that he's wronged his brother. And what this story is all about is what will God do? I think it's an interesting story, but I think it's so important for us to put ourselves into it. <clears throat> Could it be you? Is there a brother, is there a sister out there that's got some gripe against you? Should have been mine. You should have helped me. And the question comes, what will God do? Would God make our brother strong so that he can avenge himself? Would God send some strange attacker on us when we're tossing and turning in our sleep? Would God make your conscience sob? All these things can and, in fact, have happened to people. But I love this story because it tells us a whole different thing happening. Back and forth, these two are tumbling, Jacob and this attacker. Neither one breaks, and now the dawn is about to break. And Jacob starts thinking, I'm going to see him now, and he's going to see my face when the sun comes up. But the enemy reaches out and he just gently 
touches the hollow in Jacob's thigh. You know what happens, right? Pop! <laughs> His thigh bone is pulled out of socket from a little touch. Lord, this is not Esau. With whom is Jacob wrestling? Jacob knows. Who else can just touch me and boom, my bones are out of joint. When we know we've done wrong, with whom are we wrestling? Anybody had that kind of a surgery where you got to get a hip replacement? I know some of you guys have done knees or shoulders. Is this pleasant surgery? You know people have done that, right? They tell me the shoulder is one of the most painful, right? Can you imagine your hip pulled out? So how good is Jacob's wrestling going to be from this point forward in the match? The guy's a cripple, right? What can he do? <laughs> he's lame, he's in pain. But guess what? Finally, for the first time, the enemy says something to him. Let me go. Jacob goes, aha, this is weird. He touched my hip and it was dislocated. This guy could touch my arms and break them. What does he mean, let me go? I don't have a chance here. Jacob hears it as encouragement. Maybe I can hold on to this guy. He seems to think so. Let me go. The day's about to break. Through his sweat and his tears, Jacob is grinning. Maybe I can hold on. Maybe here I can see God. <coughs> no, says Jacob. Not just his fist, but his faith is getting tight. I will not let you go unless you bless me. When we have done wrong, when we've been a heel, you know, we got in some hairy situation, <laughs> and we did wrong, how are we going to live? The guilt dragging us down. God's given us a promise, and we've cheated. How can we live? I'm not going to let go of you, Lord, until you bless me. Bless me. Bless me. The attacker says, verse 27, what's your name? This is God. Doesn't he know my name? But see, now Jacob's got to say it. What's your name? And he's choking back tears, don't you think? Heel, grasper, tricky. They call me cheat. <laughs> Poor, miserable sinner. Again, I think that this story is a true story that is true also for you and me. He knows he's wronged his brothers. He knows he's in the hand of God. He knows he's as good as dead. What are you going to do with me, God? So this is so beautiful, verse 28. Your name shall no longer be Jacob. You're not just Mr. Cheat. That past is dead, it is gone, it is buried, it is forgiven. I name you, he wrestled with God. I name you, to say it in plain Hebrew, it's Ra'el. <laughs> wrestled with God. For you have Israel with God and with men, and you have <coughs> prevailed. <coughs> See, now we're at the beautiful point of this story. 
if you can confess it of yourself that you have not always been the best brother or sister. There are people out there that have been hurt. There are people out there that haven't been helped by you when you could have done something. If you can recognize that, and if you can see that you're wrestling, and really it's not just with flesh and blood, you are wrestling then with God. He's the father of your brother, your sister. And what's God going to do with you? Yeah, he'll stir your conscience. He'll put some force against you and get your attention. Fighting. Crippling. Crushing if he has to. Lord knows what you deserve, but that's not what God wants to do. <laughs> what in fact God loves to do with the heels, with the cheaters, what God loves to do is to bless us, to bless us, even if that means he's got to give us another brother. This is cool, because God gives you and me a brother who's just like this Jacob, one who's going to wrestle with God, one who's going to wrestle and wrestle until the victory gets won, one who is the real Israel, the God wrestler. I'm talking about a Jacob who's got brute muscle. He's tough. He's going to endure every agony. He's going to be beaten within an inch of a life, and he's going to keep fighting. This guy's tough. <laughs> the whole long night, he's wrestling with God. Alone there in the dead dark, just him and God. And he's praying so hard that he's sweating like blood. A tough one. Through the tears, from deep within him, out comes this cry, Lord, let your will be done. A strong one, fighting to the death to make sure that we get life. He knows who's attacked him. My God, my God, why have you you assail me. But he fights on. Why? Because he demands the blessing. <laughs> not for us, but for, not for himself, rather, but for his family, for us. Papa, Father, forgive my brothers and sisters. There's Jacob fighting, and pop is bone. Out of socket. Remember what it says about Jesus on the cross? All of his bones out of joint. Finally, he gives up his breath to God Almighty, calling, finished. The fight is finished. Victory for my people. I have Israel, I have pinned down God, says Jesus, and he must bless my sisters and brothers. Does that make any sense? Seeing how the Lord, in Jesus himself, wrestles out that forgiveness, that blessing for us. So at the end, Jacob gets a new name, wrestler. Israel. At the end, the Christ gives us a new name. He drowned the old one and pulled us up out of that water, calling us Christian. <laughs> the blessing is always supposed to go to the firstborn son. Somehow with Jacob, he got it. The blessing should go to Jesus. But guess who gets it? Love of the Father. The great promised land still to come. The Father's heart. There's the firstborn, Jesus, saying, Give it to them, Father. 
Jesus, for us, you became our big brother. Jesus, for the wrong that we have done to our sisters and brothers, you came and you wrestled out the Father's amazing blessing. So, Jesus, let us rejoice in our new name. Let us as Christians, whatever we wrestle with in life, let us as Christians, also then so blessed by you, be a blessing to those that need your help. And together we'll sing your praise all. We ask it in your holy name. Amen. God bless and keep you, friends, as you hang on to our risen Lord. If he's wrestling with you, he wants to bless you. Amen. <coughs>
back of our worship page there. The uh, Lord's service is supper. Lift up your hearts. We give them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and healing that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy God, everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all of our companions now in heaven, we too lift up your holy name and join their unending praise. Holy, 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 Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son, in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son, in the highest. Our Lord Jesus, that very night that he was betrayed, took the Passover bread, and when he thanked his heavenly Father, he broke that bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat it, remembering me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup after the supper. When he given thanks, he gave that to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This cup is the New Testament. In my blood, this shed for you, the forgiveness of your sin. Do this as often as you drink it, remembering me. I invite those in the first four pews to come and be our first two. And then the back two, and a couple, couple from the side can follow. the risen one here strengthens you in your living
says that we give God thanks. Thank the Lord and sing his praise. Tell everyone what he has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice in the God of your heaven's name. He recalls his promises and leads his people according to joy with shouts of thanksgiving. Almighty Father, you did give your Son, Jesus Christ, both as a sacrifice for our sin and a model for our godly living. Enable us by your grace so to walk in the ways of Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord. He who is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. The blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen. Go with Christ in your heart. Thanks be to God. Amen. What are you sending us off with tomorrow? Um. Lord dismiss us with your blessing. I think it's Which 924. Is, yeah, 924. That's, that, that was my guess. So 924, let's sing the uh, first and the uh, last stanza, stanza three. 924, stanzas one and three.